So everything right in front of me is everything that I will be utilizing for the 2021 turkey hunting season here in Washington State. There are some things that I won't always be carrying with me when I'm out hunting, such as my spotting scope, but I figured I'd just throw them in there because I will utilize things such as my spotting scope when I'm just driving around or just trying to locate birds. But after I show you guys what I use and what I wear and all that good stuff, I'll show you guys how I pack it into my backpack and then I'll leave out the stuff that doesn't necessarily always make it into my day bag. So we're gonna start from your guys' right and we'll work along the table to your guys' left. And then after that, again, I'll show you guys how I pack my bag. So the first thing we're gonna start out with is my backpack. This right here is the Exo Mountain Gear K3 1800 pack system. I have some uh, accessories on it, but I'm not gonna cover it right now. I'll show you guys that later when I'm talking about how I'm packing my backpack. But that is the pack system I will be running for turkey hunting this year. Since we're in the pack section, my bino harness is the marsupial gear enclosed bino harness. And alongside with the harness itself, I got like one of their small zippered pouches and I've got a rangefinder pouch on this side. And then on the bottom down here, I have one of their handgun holsters. And in this pocket right here, I just have a bunch of batteries for the camera that I'm filming with right now. And here I just got my rangefinder. And then in my binocular harness itself, I have my uh, binoculars. And these right here are the Vortex Diamondback HD 10x42 binoculars. Definitely not a high-end binocular, but I've never really had an issue with them. And so, that's going to be going with me when I'm going turkey hunting. And then on the bottom down here, I just have a Smith & Wesson Model 4516 45 ACP. I have one magazine in there right now, but I'll show you guys here. On the right side of the marsupial gear, there's a stretchy pouch right here. And I actually just have a second magazine for the handgun. And that one is always right here. That's pretty much it for my binocular harness. I ran it at the end of big game hunting season last year and i really like it so in terms of packs again that's pretty much it everything that's not on my body like the clothes i will be wearing will either be in my backpack or my bino harness the next thing we're going to talk about is just my clothing system that i'll be running for turkey hunting this year and one of the questions you guys will probably ask me is like do you need to go buy the high-end technical hunting apparel to go turkey hunt and my answer is no you don't need to go buy sicka gear you don't need to go buy kuyu you can just work with walmart brio tree mossy oak it'll do you just fine that's just something i wanted to say up front you don't need to go buy an exo mountain gear pack for turkey hunting you don't need a marsupial gear you don't need any high-end stuff to go turkey hunting i'm just showing you guys what i've invested in so far and what i will be using for turkey hunting so with that being said let's jump out of that rabbit hole and get back to talking about my gear so for gloves these are the Sika Traverse gloves, relatively thin, not so thick where you can't move your hands. So uh, it's actually a pretty perfect weight glove for me. Let's talk about what I will be wearing for my bottoms. So for my boxers, this is just a Sika Merino core boxer. Yeah, it's pretty simple, Merino wool, love it. For my long john, because in the mornings, especially during April, in the mornings, it can be pretty cold. So. I like to wear a pair of long johns and this is the Kuyu Merino 145 zip off bottoms. Again, Merino wool, I like Merino wool. And this one right here, the cool thing about these long johns right here is they have a full length side zipper. And so you don't have to take off your boots to strip off this layer right here. So let's say I'm wearing this under my main pant and I'm hiking and it's like daytime like this and it's getting hot. I can just quickly unzip this long john utilizing the uh, side zippers right here so awesome feature and then for my actual outer pant this is the Sika Traverse pant I wore this pant last year for turkey hunting and it's a very stretchy pant and it's a relatively lightweight and breathable pant which is good again especially when the sun is high like this and it's warm out you want a pant that can breathe because you don't want to have your legs sweaty and you know just sticky and all that nasty stuff so yeah that's the pant i will be wearing in terms of leg wear that's pretty much it sacred traverse pant got my long johns got my merino wool boxers and then got my gloves now for my upper body for my base layer i will be wearing this guy and this is the sika 
core lightweight long sleeve. It's just a very breathable synthetic base layer. I wore this shirt pretty much all of turkey season last year as well and even into big game hunting season. Very breathable, uh, wicks away your moisture very good. If you can shop smart, you can find this t-shirt or long sleeve for a really good deal. I think I got this shirt for like 70% off on clearance. So a lot of this Sika stuff, it's not that expensive when you know how to shop smart. You shop smart, you find what you want and you wait for sales and you hop on sales or clearances, you can snag some Sika gear or just high-end technical apparel for some pretty good prices. So again, that's my base layer for my top. For my mid-layer piece, this is the Sika Kelvin Active Jacket. It's a insulated jacket, but with the technology, it's actually a very breathable piece. So it keeps you warm, but when you're hiking, it does wick away moisture and it really just breathes very well. I tested it at the end of late season last year for hunting season. And yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces of hunting gear I've ever tested so far. And technically that's about all I would wear is just my base layer and my Sika Kelvin Active jacket. But I do understand that in the spring, sometimes the mornings are just extremely cold. And so if it comes to the point where I need an extra layer, I will just wear my Kuyu Teton insulated jacket. This is also another insulated jacket that's meant for active hiking. And so if I pair my active jacket with my Teton insulated jacket, I have two very breathable outer shells, but at the same time, they have the insulating properties to keep me warm. So they keep you warm, but they wick away moisture from your body, which is crucial. But again, the Kuyu is only worn or I'll carry it with me if it's one of those mornings where it's just insanely cold. But if not, then for the most part, I'll just wear my Sika Kelvin active jacket. And then the last thing for my clothing system is my rain jacket. It is springtime and you never know when a rainstorm will roll in. And so this right here is just a very lightweight, breathable. Well, I wouldn't say breathable, but just a lightweight, packable uh, rain jacket. And this one right here is the Kuyu Teton rain jacket. I snagged this one when they were on clearance. They got rid of the Teton lineup. So I got this jacket for a very, very dang good price. So that's pretty much my clothing system. Again, you shop smart, you can find a lot of high-end technical hunting apparel for relatively cheap prices. So that's my clothing system. I'm going to move my spotting scope down here for a moment and I want to talk about footwear. So for my socks, these are the darn tough Hunter Micro Crew Cushion, I believe. These are just a very lightweight pair of socks. To me, I don't really have trouble with cold feet. So even during November and December when there's a lot of snow, I will actually just wear a simple thin layer of sock like this. Because again, I don't really have too much trouble with cold feet. So I don't really need a thick sock. So these are like pretty much my go-to socks, whether I'm hunting turkeys, elk in, the, elk in September or year in late November. For my boots this year, I will be running the Crispy Thor GTX. These are on clearance because they came out with the second generation of the Crispy Thors. Again, goes back to my point. If you want to invest in high-end technical apparel, shop smart, wait for sales, wait for clearances. So that's my boot right there. And I will also be wearing gaiters just because in the morning, sometimes there's a lot of dew on the grass and you don't want to get your pant leg wet, which would soak down to your socks, which would then soak down into the inside of your boots. So I will wear gaiters and it's just also an extra barrier for ticks because it is warming up and ticks will be out here in no time. Pretty lucky that they're not out right now as far as I'm concerned. So these are the Kenetrek gaiters. I am not the biggest fan of these ones. It's just that these are my like beat up gaiters. That's why I'm gonna be wearing these guys for Turkey, but I wouldn't really recommend them. I think the outdoor research crocodile gaiters are much better for uh, the money that you're paying because the outdoor research and the Kenetrek, oftentimes you can find them for a similar price. And I just think the outdoor research Gators are just way ahead of the kind of trick. But again, these are just my beat up gators. So I'm gonna wear that over my boots. So that's my clothing system. That's my footwear. Now let's just talk about gear that I will be taking with me. First thing, toilet paper, hand wipes, or baby wipes. Speaks for itself, nothing special there. Uh, my headlamp, this is the Phoenix 
HL60R headlamp, rechargeable battery. Love this headlamp, never had a problem with it. I'm actually gonna get a second one just to have as a backup. But this thing, it's super bright, lasts a long time, and it's rechargeable, so it's good for me because as we'll get to here momentarily, I always have a external portable charger with me because I carry a lot of camera gear. I use my phone to record sometimes, so I always have this to power up my cameras or my phones. And so since I always have a portable charger with me, a rechargeable headlamp just goes hand in hand with each other. So I love this one, never had an issue with it again. And this little Ziploc bag, these are my licenses and just some paracord so I can weigh my bird. And the next, I just have an Allen wrench with me. Always carry a big lighter. The next one would be a Garmin inReach. I actually just activated my subscription like last week. So first time using this Garmin, but I tested it already and it's working good. So it's just a good satellite communicator to the ones at home. That way they always know where you are and they always know what you're doing. So Garmin inReach. Next thing is my knife. This right here is the Havilon and I just have it in the little case that it comes with. And I always have three spare backup blades because the Havilon is a replaceable bladed knife. And alongside with the blade itself, I just have the Havilon blade remover because these blades are extremely sharp. So I don't wanna be tweaking around with them. So if you have the Havilon, I highly encourage, just go get the actual Havilon blade remover. It's a lot safer and it's a lot more easy on you. That way you don't risk just cutting yourself deep in the back country, you know? That right there is just my knife system. I don't really process turkey on the field, so you don't need a, like a lot of tools to butcher up your turkey. If anything, I'm just using my Havilon to notch my tag. Next thing we're gonna talk about is just calls. And so in this little plastic case right here, uh, I just have three diaphragms. I have two Hunter specialty reeds and I have a zinc avian uh, reed in those as well. For my locator call, I just have one of these Hunter specialty hammer and crow calls. This is just my locator call. I only carry one locator call and it's this guy right here. And then for my final call with me, it's just a slate call. This is the Primos Old Betsy call. It comes with a slate. This paracord is just mine. I just attached it to the slate right here, which I'll show you guys how I attach to my pack here momentarily. But this is the Primos one. It comes with a striker and it also comes with this little sandpaper sponge thing so that you can rub on the surface that way you create a little bit better friction and so this one if i don't want to use a diaphragm you know it's just easy for me to use the next things i'm just going to talk about would be like camera gear i have a gopro that i will be attached to my bag and then obviously i have the camera that i'm filming with right now i just have a lot of batteries because that's just the life of a, a youtuber i guess and then in this little stealth cam sd card holder i just have spare sd cards and spare micro sd cards because the camera that i'm filming with right now it requires a full size sd card but for my gopros they actually require a micro sd card so it's good to have backup you never know sometimes if something goes wrong you forget to plug into your camera so always have spare sd cards not fun when you forget it and then the next thing is just a nalgene bottle I love Nalgene's actually. So this is just the 32 ounce Exo Mountain Gear Nalgene bottle. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is my decoy. This right here is the Avian X Lookout Hen decoy. It's an inflatable. I love that it's inflatable because sometimes I'm hiking way back in the mountains. You know, I'm going three, four, five, sometimes even six miles just to shoot a bird. And so having a turkey decoy that will deflate and easily stick onto the back of my backpack is huge for me. So that's the avian and I also just have the stake so that I can stake this decoy into the ground so that it can hold its upright position. Last is my tripod and my spawning scope. So the spawning scope for the most part, I actually won't be carrying with me, but I just put it here because it's, it will be something I utilize. And if I am using my spawning scope, I will also just have a phone scope adapter with me. So basically I attach my phone to this little piece right here and then I'll just slap my phone onto this and then my phone can record whatever it sees through the spawning scope. But the spawning scope isn't necessarily what I want you guys to see here. 
the thing I'm going to talk about is my tripod actually. So my tripod when I'm hunting, it's my best friend. Uh, this year I upgraded to the Vortex Summit Carbon 2 tripod. So this saves me a pound off of my old tripod that I'm filming on right now. Just upgrading tripods, I already shed a pound off my gear, which is always nice. New for 2021 from Vortex and I've tested it out so far. Small compact profile, smooth head. Last but not least, I actually forgot it with me right now, is my shotgun. So my shotgun is actually just the H&R Partner Pump. It's a 12 gauge. It's like one of the cheapest shotguns you can buy. I think it's like sub $200. At the end of my shotgun barrel, I just have a Carlson's full turkey choke on there, extra full turkey choke on there. And for the shells, I am shooting the Winchester Longbeard XR shot size five with a three inch shell that shotgun and that choke and these shells right here have been very successful for me with that setup right there i can confidently shoot out to 45 yards even 50 yards and know that that bird will drop in his tracks so with that being said that's about it it's definitely not as extensive as like my big game hunting gear list but that's also just turkey hunting in general you don't need a lot of equipment right in terms of quantity it's not as much as a deer hunt or an elk hunt after i show you guys how i pack my backpack i will end the video showing you guys how to treat your clothes with some sawyer permethrin spray because again it is tick season so you want to spray your clothes and get those ticks off of you as much as possible so again this is the exo mountain gear 1800 bag it's an 1800 cubic inch bag and so in the front right here you have a full length horseshoe zipper where you can fully open up your bag right here and there's actually some stuff i've got in here there is a dedicated water bladder sleeve up here and up here in one of the accessory pouches from exo this is where i store my first aid kit so how these attach is there's a little webbing loop right here and once you attach your buckle you can just simply detach the buckle you can take out your first aid kit and i also have one in here which i'll show you guys what i store in there so once you're done with your first aid kit or whatever you're storing in this, you just simply clip this back on and just shove it back into your backpack. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is how I store my main compartment and then we'll jump into the side zippers here and here and then we'll even jump into my accessory pockets down here. So the first thing I do is I take my rain jacket and I just shove it at the very bottom because that is typically the last thing I will need. So it's gonna be at the very bottom. On top of my rain jacket, this is where I put my TP and my wet wipes. It's always right there. And then for my clothes, let's just imagine that I'm not packing anything because all of these clothes are on my body and I'm wearing it. And then typically on top of my TP right here, this is where I'll store my food, but I'm not actually going on a turkey hunt. So I don't have my food here right now, but this is where I'll just store my food. And then once I done on the bottom like that, fold this open and on this little flap right here, there's a little seal nylon pouch right here. And this is where I store my licenses. This is like essentially a waterproof pouch, but I also put my licenses in a Ziploc bag as well, just to make it even more secure from water. I'll just slide that right in there. Take my Havilon knife, put it in there as well and take my blade remover and put it in there as well. And that's what's in this little uh, seal nylon zipper pouch on this horseshoe flap right here. And then again, I have one of these seal nylon pouches up here. This is where I store my spare SD cards. This is also where I store my portable charger. We'll put this right here because these seal nylon pouches right here, they're relatively waterproof. So I wanna store my electronics in a waterproof storage. And I'll just set that right there. And that's essentially it for my main compartment. With the EXO Mountain Gear 1800, there's also a side zipper pouch right here on this side. There's also one on this side. This side is a dedicated spotting scope pocket. So for some reason, if I was to bring my spotting scope, my spotting scope would go into this pocket here, but I'm not gonna show you guys how I put it in there because there, there's a good chance I'm not gonna actually bring my spotting scope with me. But what I do store in this pouch right here is my stake for my decoy. This thing, it's easy to lose. So I always store it in this pocket and that's pretty much it. My stake's right there. I always know where it is unless I'm using it, then I, it won't be right there. So now let's talk about accessories. So on 
the right side of my hip belt, I actually have a stone glacier large accessory pocket. And on this side, I have the regular Exo Mountain Gear uh, pocket. But since I have this one, I like this one because it's vertical. And since it's vertical like this, I can fully store my Galaxy S9 with the phone scope adapter in here if I needed to. So that's why I like the vertical shape right here. I like how it can store my phone if I need it. But for the most part, this pocket right here, this is where I store my Allen wrench, my lighter, and my headlamp. So that's really all there is in this large accessory pocket right here. If I'm not carrying my tripod, then my tripod will actually go into this other side where my spotting scope would go. And I'll just stick the legs of my tripod into this stretch pocket down here. And then I'll just cinch this and I'll just also buckle this part down here. And then my tripod sits on this side of my backpack. Again, that's only if I'm not carrying this tripod on hand. On this other stretch pocket down here, this is where I'll store my Nalgene bottle. So my Nalgene bottle will just go right there. And so I just have quick access to it whenever I need a drink. On this side of my backpack, you guys can see here, I have my Kafaro Universal Gun Bear. This is how I carry my rifle or my shotgun. So the butt of my rifle or shotgun goes in here. And then I secure the pump or the barrel of my sh shotgun through this tab loop. And then I just cinch it and this will hold my barrel in place. And then whenever I need to access my shotgun, I'll just simply pop it open. On the other side right here, I have one of the camera clips from Peak Design. And this is actually for my GoPro. So what I'll do is I'll just take my GoPro and using the adapter piece that comes with it, I'll just slip it on there. And then right here, I essentially have a first person action camera with me. I'm gonna take this off for now just to make the strap not flop as bad. And so how I store my slate call, I have my slate call tied to this little cord right here. And what I'll do is I'll just run this paracord through this loop or this strap right here. And I'll just simply pull this slate call around. So right now it's secured to this strap. And I'll just simply put this slate call right here and so my slate call is always secure to my backpack that way if i need to drop it it will just hang on my backpack and it just doesn't fall on the ground and i have it in here just so that you know it's easy access but that's not only what i put in here i also put the little uh, sandpaper sponge to help create more friction on my call in this pocket right here so one thing i forgot to show you guys is how i store my decoy so if i'm not using my decoy actively I'll put my decoy on the front panel right here. And on the front right here, there are two straps that buckle in. So I'll just buckle in this one, cinch this, and then I'll go to the bottom down here and I will buckle this as well. And then those two straps, they hold my decoy in place. And now I can just hike around with my decoy on my back. Again, my decoy is only on here if I'm not using it. So if we're hiking in in the morning or we're successful and we're just coming back, this is the only time my decoy will be stored like this. If it's not, then my decoy will usually just be on hand. That way I'm always ready to just stake down my decoy if we run into some gobblers. So again, for my vinyl harness, in here I just have three batteries for the camera that I'm filming with right now. Just need it at my fingertips so that I don't miss out recording on any action. And then in the front right here, I have a zippered pocket. This is where I store my diaphragms. And then this is also where I just store a bunch of my GoPro batteries. And so I'll have like six or seven GoPro batteries right here. So GoPro batteries in the front and my diaphragm calls. And then on this side right here, you guys can see there's a little pocket with this. This is where I store the striker for my slate call and then i'll also just store my crow call right here so i always have my crow call at my chest provides convenient access so this is the product that i will be using i've used this for the past three years and i've noticed a big decrease of ticks on me so this is made by sawyer and you can typically find this in the yellow 
yellow containers. This is my first time using a spray can like this. I usually just use a, a spray bottle, but got a good deal on this one. So with this, you just lay out your clothes that you want to treat with. And all you have to do is just simply spray. So with this, So we're gonna spray pretty much every single piece. So we got like up to here. Now we're gonna spray the bottom down here. So we got this front side. Now we're just gonna flip our pant to the back side and we're gonna do the same thing to the back side. Now we're on the back side here and let's spray. Now, do the bottom pant leg down here. Now, typically what's gonna happen is ticks are gonna crawl from the ground onto your boot, onto your legs. So I like to go heavy on my pant. So even like on the inside, like here, like I'll just flip this out for a little bit, especially near the cuff of your pant legs. I'll just turn it around and I will actually spray the inside as well i'll also just spray the top over here too like pretty much any entrance to your clothes so for example like my pant it could go on my pant leg or it could go into my body from my waist these are where i will spray the inside too so i just sprayed the bottom of my pant leg that way if they somehow manage to get inside they're just getting attacked by the Sawyer permethrin spray and so with the waist up here just spray that as well spray it good and now all we gotta do is we just gotta hang this and we just gotta let it dry put this back here for now let's let that dry now we just gotta spray pretty much all of our other pieces of clothes so here's my long john Flip this around. Now I just gotta let this dry too. Now you guys get the point with clothes, but I literally treat everything. So even my socks, I will treat my socks too. So with a boot, again, it's just a simple spray. We're just gonna spray one side first, get the outside. And with the boots, I also make sure I get the inside. Yep, you spray your bino harness and you spray your backpack too. Pretty much everything that you're gonna be taking with you in the turkey woods, you spray. And off to hanging. All right, got my bino harness hanging, got my kuyu, my sika, and I just got all my other clothes just hanging. That's one of the important things too. Once you spray, make sure you let your clothes dry. Let the product do its work, let it dry. Right now I'm lucky it's sunny and there's a little bit of breeze to help dry everything out. So that's gonna do it for this one. Hopefully this video helps you guys out in terms of you know, pointing you in the right direction of what gear you might need to get for turkey hunting season. And so with that being said, I will see you guys on the turkey woods. Good luck guys.